better than what I thought or hoped it would be working. Um, so what I've done is I took this tubing and I wrapped it around my stovepipe. Of course this stays hot and then I put myself just a little uh, shut off valve there. Nothing too big. You just get it at home hardware. That's where I bought all this stuff at. Home hardware. And uh, I ran it all the way around. Brought it over here what's called a bulkhead um, fitting and it goes into this. This is just a cheap little uh, tote that you can pick up, a storage tote. You can pick them up at Walmart, anywhere like that. And I put that uh, in there, connected the tube to it. And what happens is it's just enough gravity feed that it feeds into this, goes in through my worm coil, and then comes out into the uh, back of my boiling pan. This holds about 20 gallons, so it works really well. And over here, you can see it just trickles in here. What's good about this is that it keeps the sap warm. So no cold sap is coming into my boiling pan. Now, I've sped it up here a little bit right now, just Put a little extra syrup or sap in my pan because it was boiling off pretty fast. Uh, but it's working excellent. It heats the sap. I don't have to preheat it anywhere else. Everything's right there. And to I've, I've seen people make these, and their struggle was always how to keep it tight, the coils tight, as they wrapped it around their stovepipe. What I did. So I just took some plumber strap, it's metal plumber strap, and I started my coil, and then I anchored this one end with plumber strap, and then I took wide swings around, keeping some good weight on it, and I made it really tight around my stovepipe, and then once I got it to, to where I wanted it, I took it and just anchored it to the front of my pan there for to hold it in place, and then as I did that, I put little places where I put some more plumber strap and held everything in place. Once I did that, everything stayed tight and the coil is working perfectly. Now, it was neat this morning when I came down here. It was about a minus 14 last night. It was about minus 8 when I got here this morning. And so, there had been some sap in this. Um, and I was worried it was going to freeze, which it did, obviously, at that cold of a temperature. But the minute I started my fire, all of it all thawed out real quick. It all was running within five minutes. And so the cold really doesn't have any effect on it once you get your fire going. Probably what I'll do is back by my reservoir tank, I'll probably put a shut off way back there. That way I can shut it off back at my tank and then leave this run and drain all of that out of my coil here then this, none of that will freeze. But that's a very minimal problem that, we're, that, that I can foresee. And so it works excellent. And uh, everything's boiling good. It keeps everything right where it should be. My front tank is my main uh, draw off tank and it's working perfectly. Um, as you can see, you can't see me. But there's lots of steam, lots of evaporation going on. I got a good fire on. And so this system for preheating is working really, really well. Now I did see a couple guys say they had a problem keeping their sap warm because it wasn't close enough to the pipe. The key to make that work 
is to get that on that pipe as tight as you can. And the key to do that is have your pipe so that you can actually um, let it stand independently and wrap that really tight and anchor it as you go. And then that'll always stay hot like, like it's supposed to. I'm very pleased with it. And so I may have, I think the copper tubing was a buck 29 a foot. Um, that's Canadian money. And the shutoffs and everything, I may have $10 in that. So total price from shutoff to finish, I doubt I've got $60 in the whole preheating system. Very, very uh, inexpensive, but solves a huge issue of how to preheat your sap. Working great. I'm really excited about it. Working better than I thought it was going to. And so, uh, you know, there's a little nifty idea if you want to preheat your sap, low cost, there's nothing fancy. But hey, when you're out here and you're homesteading, DIYing it all the way, things like this, that's all you need. It works perfect. Thanks for watching. If you like it, subscribe to our channel. We're new to this. We need all the subscribers we can get. Don't forget to like us, thumbs up. If you get any questions or comments, leave them below and we'll get back to your questions or comments as quick as we possibly can. And yes, we do have syrup. Um, we are selling syrup. We're not sure about how to ship it to the U.S. or even if we can because of the stipulations on shipping liquids across the border. Um, we will. Some of you have asked about it already. We'll check on that and get back to you. If we can, we'll get your address and we'll ship it to you um, right away. Here in Canada, obviously, if you're close to where we're at, which is in uh, uh, basically in Nova Scotia, a little place called South William City, it's between North and North Milton, uh, right off the side of the road. You can come here anytime for a visit. We'd love, we'd love to see you. But if you're in Canada and you'd like to have some syrup, we gladly ship it to you as well. So anyhow, y'all have a great day. I'm going to get back to this. i got some more stuff I want to get accomplished. And we'll check back with you later. Thank you.